Every once in a while, you find an author whose work over the course of multiple years develops to the point where you start to ask yourself, is the person who's written their later work the same person that wrote the earlier book? Because it seems like they've developed so much that they've actually managed to turn into a completely different person. What's up readers, I'm Adam aka A Dude Who Reads, and today I want to talk about two books by the same author which in my mind are so totally completely different in terms of quality that I feel like it, it, it almost compels me to compare them. And those two books are The Martian and Project Hail Mary, both by Andy Weir. So for starters, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to kind of go through Andy Weir's uh, progression as an author, what he's done, kind of how he got to where he is, then we'll talk about the two books and kind of compare and contrast them and see the differences between the two. Starting off with a little bit of history about Andy Weir. So for those of you who don't know, uh, which probably is a minority of people at this point, because Andy Weir kind of skyrocketed to uh, overnight fame in the publishing world. So he was a self-published author who was writing uh, pretty much to a super small audience on his website for over a decade writing these kind of installments of uh, what would eventually become the novel The Martian. So The Martian was published on his website in these sort of uh, small chapters, and that was done, I, my understanding is he completed The Martian, at least the first draft of it that was published to the website in 2011, and then in 2014 he was, you know, quote unquote discovered, and his book was published by Random House. The next year or so was a whirlwind. A, a, the Martian became a bestseller. It got turned into a uh, big budget Hollywood movie starring Matt Damon in 2015. And Andy Weir kind of got catapulted into the limelight of new authors. Um, and so he, you know, went from being a guy whose day job was computer programming to being a full-time author. So he followed that up in 2017 with Artemis, which was his second book, which to be honest, kind of flew a little bit under the radar. I'm not sure that it was uh, a super popular book, but it definitely, uh, you know, it definitely was enough to get him to write a third book in 2021, which was Project Hail Mary. Now, my introduction to Andy Weir happened uh, last year in 2023, where I picked up Project Hail Mary on a little bit of a whim. I had never read uh, his previous two books before, and so I just grabbed Project Hail Mary from the library. I read it, and I was super pleasantly surprised, to the point where Project Hail Mary ended up on my top 10 list of books that I read in 2023. And it was, to me, it was just a really, really great, refreshing uh, sci-fi story with some really great character moments, um, some really great emotions, some really great uh, discussions of themes about, you know, kind of legacy, loneliness, and relationships, and what it means to kind of be a human in this sort of technologically advanced world where people seem to be getting more disconnected. Anyway, it was, it was just really a, a phenomenal read. So I was pleasantly surprised by this because honestly, I kind of thought Andy Weir was all hype until I read Project Hail Mary and found out, you know what, I really enjoyed this book. So uh, fast forward to January, 2024, and I decided, you know what, if I liked Project Hail Mary that much, uh, maybe I'll like Andy Weir's other books just as much. So I finally picked up The Martian, uh, again from the library, and I read The Martian. And this is where I was a little bit surprised because The Martian is uh, nowhere near as good as Project Hail Mary. And this was, the surprise for me was, this is the book that made Andy Weir's name. This is the thing that catapulted him to fame. And it left me lukewarm at best. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of look at The Martian, look at Project Hail Mary, say what worked in one, what didn't work in the other, and kind of hold this up as an example of an author who has honed his craft over time and has become a much better writer uh, over the course of just three books. Um, and so let's, uh, let's start that off. And I'm going to try and organize this a little bit, but just by the very nature of how I do these things, it will be a little bit scattered, right? So first off, first thing I want to talk about is, you know, structurally, these novels are not that different. The Martian and Project Hail Mary, they are both, they're both first person accounts by a protagonist uh, in a, you know, not too distant future, but definitely a more technologically advanced future. Um, both uh, protagonists are up in space somewhere. 
but these are not the project hail mary is not a cookie cutter copy of the martian uh in fact the stories are, are quite quite different but i'm going to talk about that in a minute right now i want to talk about is the two protagonists in the martian it's mark watney in the project hail mary it's ryland grace at a surface level these two protagonists could be the same person they are both sort of uh you know i want to say young to middle-aged white males uh, who have sort of this uh, sort of similar personalities, at least on the surface. Um, but as much as it might be tempting to say that there's a type that, uh, that Andy Weir is writing, the similarities kind of end there. And the reason they, they end there is because in The Martian, that's pretty much all there is to know about Mark White Watney as a character. One of my biggest issues with The Martian was the character of Watney was just kind of, you know, bland. He, the entire book is written in a, or most of the book is written in an epistolary format. So it's him writing, not letters, but sort of uh, logs of what is happening to him while he's on Mars. This is not a spoiler, by the way. You can get that much just by the title of the book. And so you would think that an entire book written in this first person perspective from the point of view of the person who is living through these adventures would give you a little bit of insight into what, who Watney is. But that is not what The Martian does. Instead, The Martian focuses so much on sort of the challenges that uh, exist for this man who's, who's stuck on Mars and how he's going to overcome them using science that the book almost kind of gets derailed by the fact that it's using this kind of hard sci-fi, trying to use real science to solve these problems in a really clever way. It focuses so hard on that that we kind of forget about the fact that there's a real human being who's living through this. To the point where, as I was reading through The Martian, you know, I was halfway, three quarters of the way through the book, and I, I realized that at some point, at no point did I ever really feel concerned for Watney's safety or health or well-being. Here's a guy who's stranded on Mars, and because of the way this book is written and because of, you know, the way his personality is portrayed as being sort of wisecracking and not really too reflective, he is all by himself on a planet, you know, the odds of him surviving are next to none. And yet I don't feel any of this tension, any of this, uh, any of this, any of the consequences of this at all. In fact, I almost don't care about Watney as a character, despite the fact that he is, you know, 90% of The Martian as a book. And it's because his character is just so shallow. And, you know, if you read through to the end of the book, obviously there's some consequences and you could, you might make a case that there's, you know, the, there's a character evolution before, you know, the end, which I'm not going to spoil the end, but maybe you could make that argument. But my take on it is the ending of the book is completely disconnected from the rest of the book and none of that character evolution is on display at any point throughout any of this book. So Martian, the Martian Watney's character development is, you know, non-existent. Compare that to Project Hail Mary where Rylan Grace is a character who's deep, he's complex, he has mixed feelings about what he's doing and layer on to that, and this is where you start to see, I think, uh, Weir's evolution as an author you have this new narrative device that Weir is going to introduce where Ryland Grace actually doesn't have a memory of how he, uh, how he got onto this mission in the first place. And so as the book is progressing, his memory is slowly starting to recover. And so you've got this narrative device where you have the main timeline of the story happening in one sort of one set. And then it's, it's cut in with flashbacks of Ryland getting his memory back. And what's great about this is it's not just a gimmick. It actually serves to help develop Ryland's personality to the point where, whereas I didn't care at all about Watney's well-being, I really, really felt for Ryland Grace as a character. I was worried about what was going to happen to him. Uh, I was concerned when, you know, it looked very likely that he was going to die. And I'm not saying he doesn't die. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Again, I'm not spoiling it. But there was a real emotional connection for me with that character compared to the character in The Martian, which was just kind of a mouthpiece to tell a story. So that is, is I think, probably the single biggest difference between these two stories. The other thing that I think you can see is, again, The Martian, I think, was so popular because it was a fresh take on sci-fi where a lot of sci-fi was going in a very uh, specific direction. And The Martian was this kind of modernized version of this hard sci-fi where you it yes it's science fiction yes it's a little bit fantastical but 
it really was focused on the science and using brains as a way to solve problems. And I think that was so novel that it was enough to kind of propel it into being a success. What I respect about Andy Weir is that he didn't rest on the laurels of this is the recipe that worked in The Martian, and so I'm going to apply the same recipe for every single book. Um, he could have literally reheated the plot from The Martian, changed up the story a little bit, and probably had another commercial success. I compare Andy Weir to someone like, um, and forgive me for saying this, uh, Ernest Klein, who you know wrote Ready Player One, which is a huge success. And then he followed that up by creating a sequel called Ready Player Two, which, quite frankly, is just a reheated version of Ready Player One. Like, the, the plot is almost identical. Character development that happened in Ready Player One was hit, you, you hit the reset button on it, the character goes back to where he was before, all for the purposes of kind of retelling the same story. Um, and I don't know how Ready Player did, Two did from a commercial perspective, but this was that was that was probably one of the most disappointing sequels I have ever read in my life. Uh, now, Project Hail Mary is not a sequel to The Martian, but the type of story that Andy Weir writes, like I said, could easily be accused of being like, you take this sort of core set of ideas of you send a guy out in space and now he has to survive and he has to use his brain to do it. Uh, you could just take that same idea and reheat it and probably churn out a certain number of hits before people get tired of it. But Weir did not do that. Project Hail Mary is original, it's fresh, um, there's new narrative devices that are thrown in there, we get much stronger character development, we get a plot that's far more interesting, we actually get plot twists and turns, which you didn't actually get in The Martian. So to me, you know, the point of the video here at this point, after I've gone on and talked about this stuff for so long, is really that sometimes when you read an author, you read one thing by them, and there's a very high likelihood that if you like an author, you are gonna go back and read the rest of their stuff. One of the reasons I like to read authors in chronological order, which is not what I do with Andy Weir, is that I like to watch their progression, how they develop their skills. And with Andy Weir, this is a guy who's only written three books. I didn't even read the middle one, but going from the first one to the third one, you can clearly see how much he has developed his craft. And I have a huge amount of respect for that. So. All that to say, despite the fact that having read The Martian and having been pretty disappointed by that book, how much I saw of how much growth I saw of the author from book one to book three leads me to believe that if you can continue to improve at that pace, we are likely to see a lot of great things coming from Andy Weir in the future. Now, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear what you thought of either of these books. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Did you enjoy The Martian? Did you enjoy Project Hail Mary? Are you looking forward to stuff by Andy Weir in the future? Uh, or have you not read either of these? And if so, what's been stopping you from doing it? I would love to hear about it. Drop me a line in the comments below and hopefully we can have a nice discussion. Aside from that, happy reading. Talk soon. Cheers.